This is a documentary about the Military Magai College of Education under the stewardship of Dr. Philip John Kano since he took over the administration of the college. But before taking you through, let's look at the background of the institution. The Milti Magai Teachers College was found in 1963 and was originally host at Tawa Hill in Freetown. The mission of the MMTC was to train teachers for the lower levels of secondary school from 1 to 3. Until 1967, graduates of MMTC were awarded either Teacher Certificate TC or Teacher's Advanced Certificate TAC. In 1967, a new three years program was introduced. The curriculum was restructured and both the TC and TAC were phased out and replaced with a higher teacher certificate, HTC. In 1995, in response to the need of the new 6334 system of education, a Bachelor of Education, PED, degree program was introduced. The 6334 system involved six years of primary schooling, three years of junior secondary schooling, JSS, three years of senior secondary schooling, SSS, and four years of tertiary education. The Bachelor of Education degree program was introduced in the specialist subject areas physical and health education, performing arts, practical arts, technical studies, business studies, secretarial studies, integrated science, and the genius language, which include Mende, Timini, and Creole, community development studies, social studies, and a religious and moral education. This significant restructuring of the curriculum meant a change in the deep and breadth of education offered. And the name was changed to the Milti Magai College of Education, MMCE, to reflect this. In the year 2000, Milti Magai College of Education emerged with Freetown Technical Institute at Congo Cross and the Hotel Tourism Training Institute at Brookfields to become the Milti Magai College of Education and Technology. This latest restructuring transformed the college into a polytechnic the programs at MMCET are divided into four faculties, Education, Engineering, Civil, Electrical and Mechanical, Science and Technology, and Business and Management, including Hotel and Tourism. The march brought about a reconstruction of both staff and student administrative unit. Let me take you through some of the program the MMCET offers. Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Technology, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Vocational Studies, Higher National Diploma, Higher Teacher Certificate, Higher National Certificate, National Diploma, National Certificate, National Trade Certificate, Trade Test Certificate, IT Diploma, it is a public institution and it is committed to a number of things. It is committed to research and the discovery of knowledge that will provide solution to the nation's immediate environment and the world. It is also committed to academic excellence and training her students with the necessary practical skill set they need to be useful in the industry upon graduation. Milti Magai College of Education and Technology is also particular about vocational training of our student. The institution creates excellence education, resources and teaching methods and is particular about their distribution. It is an institution with a medium-sized community. The student body is quite diverse in terms of age, sex, nationality and several other factors. The college offers full-time undergraduate programs in different campuses in several parts of the country. The institution has a faculty of education a faculty of engineering and several others taking full-time degree programs. The college admission is very competitive. Now, let's look at the college before the coming of Dr. Philip John Kano. The Milti Magai College of Education and Technology, as it was known for a place of excellence, where great men and women were built. Over the years, the college have been forsaken and dropped to a stage 
We are no parents or guidance. We like to send the children for education. Bushes, and because the, even the doors to the female hostel have no lock, they are not secure, they are not properly taken care of. The place is totally damaged. The environment is very unhealthy. Believe you me, the learning environment of Milti Magai College of Education and Technology is completely deplorable. Students are suffering. No healthy environment for learning here. You can see the windows are all damaged. Yeah, this is the front view of the computer lab. And if you can see this is the entrance of the computer lab, you can see students are inside taking lectures. You can see the computers are not sufficient for students. Yeah. Uh, some of the constraints that we are having is computers. The computers are not enough for the students. As you can see, we are having uh, two, three students per computer. But now it has been used like a home where you have uh, cold pots, uh, firewood, stones, all around the canteen where students will come and sit so to rest and take drink and then hold meetings. But now the states of this canteen is very deplorable. As you can see the environment is filthy and dirty. Yeah, this is the front view of one of the female hostels called Elizabeth Hart. Normally used to call EH. This is the hostel. We have the HTC students and the diploma students normally reside. This is the front view of the hostel. If you can take a look at the hostel, it's deplorable. It is not conducive. And it's not an environment that is conducive for a living student. The hostels were deplorable with no good toilet facilities. Instead, students will use black rubbers to ease themselves, which they will later empty at the nearby bush. A learning institution without a functioning library like the MMCET was a big shame on the face of the previous administration, which they failed to fix. The library was nothing good to talk about because there was no books and access for the students to go there and study. It was an empty carcass which was neglected for over three years. The college offers biology and chemistry. Both of these subjects would go without a functioning laboratory. The laboratory at MMCET was nothing good to write home about because there was no equipment or instrument for the students to carry out their research, which the previous administration failed to fix. My name is Sergei Papamafinda. Actually, I'm in Risoya, HS, the down floor. As you can see, the condition of the hostel, we are really suffering our students in this campus. Those, especially with the students who are in the hostels. You think of the, the bathrooms, it's not properly good for our condition, our health condition. You think of the hostel, the, the, the corridor, you can see the corridor, the condition of the place, you can see the floor, yeah, okay. how the yeah, floor is. Yeah, it's not good. You think of the, the, the rooms, the individual rooms, they are not properly maintained. You can go to the bathroom, you think of the toilet, you think of the high hygiene, the condition of our health. It's very, this is a rainy season, and we are living in this kind of condition. The Great Hall is a place where great men and women take their examinations, but over the years, the Great Hall have been neglected and no rehabilitation work was done to it, which leaves many of the alumni in doubt about the status of their Great Hall. Now, let's look at the transformation which have taken place under the new administration of Dr. Philip John Kanu since he took over the administration of the college. Dr. Philip John Kanu, when he took over the administration of the college, said, Education is key to the development of human capital and increasing the skills and knowledge of individuals is one of its priorities. 
Also, His Excellency President Julius Marabio's New Direction Agenda, which reiterated the importance of human capital development through education. His vision is to transform the college from the deplorable condition which he met. As we said earlier, the hostess, where students normally decide, was in a very deplorable condition. But when Dr. Philip John Cano took over the administration, he promised them that he would try to transform and improve the status of those hostels. Prior to his promise, he delivered and transformed the hostels with good accommodations and also toilet facilities for them. As we spoke earlier about the laboratory, which was in a very deplorable condition, Dr. Philip John Cano, with his vision in improving the human capital development through education, state-of-the-art laboratory has been built and furnished with the latest technologies where the students will now be able to do their research and other works. I am actually the research director at uh, Milton Maga. This um, is, you are now in a new laboratory that we created at Milton Maga. This is just um, one of the drives that we have for the preparation for us to be um, a university. This has been our dream and we've been taking it very serious. What you've seen here is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's take a look at the library. The library, as we stated earlier, where no books and students were denied the access to study, has now been refurbished with latest collections of books and students have been given the opportunity once again to go there, do their research and study. The Great Hall, which was forsaken for over a decade, has now been refurbished with a state-of-the-art facilities which can now be compared to any other university in the country. The Milton Magai College of Education and Technology has over the years been viewed as a place not fit for quality learning. Parents, guardians, and the public viewed the college as a neglected learning environment. Since the coming of the SAPP government, the president, retired brigadier Julius Marabio, in his wisdom, thought it fit that the Milton Magai College of Education and Technology, out of the many places that needs and he needs someone who is developmentally oriented to run the affairs of the college, because his priority are set towards improving the educational system in the country. That was why he appointed Dr. Philip John Kano to head the college. Now, let's have a word from the principal of the Milton Magai College of Education and Technology, Dr. Philip John Kano, on what he has done and what needs to be done with regards to improving the educational facilities in the college. The college, I took it over, I can refer to the stage as a stage wherein nobody wanted to come to this college any longer, looking at uh, if you are really looking for you to have a quality education. Most of the people we are really frowning at what has been happening in this college. When I made the college, the toilets of uh, the student hostels, the classrooms, the blackboards, everything, the sitting accommodation was not uh, enough for the students. I met a lot of liabilities from the retirees and also even with the PYE. All of these liabilities were the ones that I inherited. I inherited a college where in even the land situation, we didn't even know if we are the owner of the land or not, because a lot of people have decided to grab the land, the college land. And uh, nobody cares what was happening in the, all of that area. I also met a college where in after the, after the examination, they will take a year for results to be published. People will graduate, students will graduate, and they will take them several years for them to have their results. I met that kind of college. I met a college where in lecturers and uh, the, the administrative staff and even the junior staff, they are not committed to duty. I met a college that uh, they were not receiving salaries on time. They were receiving salaries maybe after every four months, they pay them one month. And they will wait again for another four months, they bring another one month. I met a college wherein no uh, 
respect for the duty that they are receiving salary for. I met a college joining the students are not the center of uh, the administration. The interest of the administration is actually not centered around the students. That's a, that's a college that I inherited. A college that was really not having a strategic plan. A college that didn't have a direction because if you are running an institution without a strategic plan, you don't have a direction. But when I came in, from that time to now, all of these things have been changed. Let me take through, let me take the viewers and the listeners through what we are able to achieve. In the area of infrastructure and the, the turning around of the college, we are able to fix all the toilets in the hostels, in the classrooms, in the lecture rooms, in the offices of administrative and staff. We are able to fix all of them. And this cost us a whooping sum of very close to 1.4 billion and we are also able to fix all of the, the the hostels with standby tanks because if you run if you have toilets without water and running water it will be very difficult for do for you to say you have a complete toilet so we have tanks fitted in all of these hostels and we also have standby tanks we are in, even if we have a problem of having water from Guma for the next two, three days, the standby tanks should be able to supply water in all of the toilets, in all of the hostels and in all of the classrooms. We are also able to renovate key buildings like the library. The library is supposed to be a very important building I inherited an institution wherein that library has not been functioning. It was closed for the past 10, 15 years. It was closed and uh, we rehabilitated it. And it is functional now with uh, recent books and also online libraries. We are linked with inst institutions out of Sierra Leone that are supporting us so that uh, when our students need journals and uh, other articles they were able to access them through these online libraries uh, it is good it is on we have uh, also built a staff complex because the, the staff room that was that i inherited it was also uh, in the building of the library and we've moved that one now to a staff complex that i am sure if you can go around and see, you will know that uh, we've uh, given a befitting uh, building for our rival lecturers. They have offices for, we have offices for all the things and we also have offices now for the heads of departments. So students know where to find their heads of departments. Unlike before this time, lecturers don't have offices in this place. They come and they will lecture after lectures, they sit in their classrooms or they go home. But we want them to be doing other work, like mentoring the students. We have to give them a decent and conducive space. They have their common room, and that common room is fitted with internet. Because we are expecting them, they should be able to sit in their common room to do research for the courses that they are teaching and even for their own publications also. We have uh, constructed a lot of things in this place, even the security post, it was constructed during our time. Because we used to have a situation we are in, bad people will come, they will steal, and at one point in time, they even rape our students. But because of this, the presence of the police post and the police on patrol, we didn't have any problem. We are doing a lot of beautification. One thing that I keep on telling my staff, what makes some of these European countries and even the, the countries that we admire, is two things, paint and flowers. If you can just beautify your compound with the right flowers, 
and do the right painting. When somebody visits you, you will know that uh, you know what it takes. And we, we are bringing the institution we are in as you enter the campus, as it is now. When you enter, you know that uh, you are an environment of learning. So the beautification is going on in all the three campuses. We have also secured funding through the Ministry of Tourism. I want to say thank you to the Minister of Tourism and also the Minister of Trade because these are the two ministries that actually secured that funding for the rehabilitation of the hospitality campus, which is the Brookfield campus. I want to say thank you very much to these two ministers because they work assiduously to make sure that we receive that grant. Minister of Tourism, we are very grateful and I'm sure even my students, they are very grateful to you for bringing this needed support because that campus has been dilapidated for the past 20 years. It is only your ministry, with the support of the Ministry of Trade, we are able to secure the funding. And I also want to thank my ministry for the support they've been giving me from the time they appointed me up to this moment. I've received a lot of support from them. We are doing a lot of work in those campuses. The friends at Google Cross Campus, I'm sure the students, when they return now, they will see that uh, the movement in their campus has been restricted because we've increased the height of their friends and we've closed all of the entry points that are not legal to the college. We only have now two gates the main entrance and the exit gates in that campus. Because my students have been disturbed all this while. And these are simple things that we should be able to fix up. We have fixed that one also. As I said, that we inherited a very big liability, a liability of over 9 billion leons. And we've paid up to 90% of the 9 billion leons of that money. I want to thank the government of Sierra Leone through my ministry for supporting us so that we'll be able to pay this liability to those people, the suppliers, the contractors, and even the retirees. For those who are to be paid their ex gratia, there were 31 staff. We are able to pay them over 2.5 billion. We pay them is a 2.5 billion for the ex gratia for 31 retirees who left the college for the past eight, 10 years. Nobody was talking to them to pay them their money. When this government came into power and I was appointed through the, the wisdom of our president, we are able to pay that money. I'm sure the retirees, because they came here to pray for the president, they promised me that they will always pray for this president. Because if it is not for him, they will not eat their money and even the children of those who died, they said they will not have received this money. So we, we thank God for the life of the president who is very magnanimous to give us all of this support so that uh, we make people, I mean, to put smiles in the face of the citizen of this country. We also have uh, public lectures that we commission. And that lecture was commissioned by no less a person but the Chief Minister, Professor David Francis, who came here to, to commission the lecture, the public lectures, and also commission the, the lab, the laboratory, a state-of-the-art laboratory that uh, we can do a lot of analysis, and also the library. Professor came here that day to launch the lectures, and that lectures had great momentum We've received a lot of experts, some from out of the country, some within the country. They've delivered lectures in areas that uh, we didn't have expertise within the, the, the college. We also have a... I introduced a breakfast lunch, a breakfast lectures, which I named the Principal's Breakfast. We are in, I have specific topics that I teach the lecturers and we also invite other experts to support in the areas that we need, our lecturers need capacity. We have, uh, I inherited 
an institution wherein the blackboard is the means of uh, teaching. Now we have whiteboard and uh, we also have projectors that, uh, well, we've started with the greater. We've renovated the greater. For those who are past students of the Godrich campus, they will tell you that uh, that all used to sit great men. But when I came, I met it in a very bad shape. But today, we are able to renovate the great hall, fix it up. Now, we are fitting it with uh, air conditions. I think uh, for all of what we are doing, we make sure that uh, we focus on the agenda of the president. We can't have an institution wherein when people visit your campus, they will know that they see it as not to be an institution fit for the purpose. We have also have the college website. Now, publication of results will going to be on that college website because we are having problems. We are in students will snap the results and share it on the social media, which for me, I don't think is that is really proper. So to curtail that one, we are publishing the results on the website of the college. We are in every student will just query in. Uh, using your ID number, then you're able to see all your grades. That work, we have uh, established that as part of the college website, and the college website is run and is functioning. Within the website also, we are doing online teaching. Because of the COVID that is now disturbing the country, we are very lucky to finish our exams, and we've already published our results for the first semester we are now working on the second semester and we've uploaded all our notes. We have a system where all the lecturers have uploaded their notes into that system. We call it the student blackboard. For those of us who study out of this country, you know, when we see student blackboard, the lecturer will upload all the lecture notes in that system. When they meet in class, it's an interactive session. And that's a system that uh, we, we also have, we embedded that system in the college website. We have CCTV cameras to monitor lecturers and also security within the campuses. Of course, we have a state-of-the-art laboratory. And that laboratory, if we are to quantify the amount of money donors have supported us with, it is well over 1.7 million euro that we've received. We have this laboratory. This college never thought of uh, acquiring equipment because we are training science teachers. How could you train a teacher and you expect that teacher to be able to train the student for them to be able to use science equipment without exposing them during their training? So we decided to have that one also. This is the first time for the past 10, 15 years we will not be having a trained and qualified medical doctor. We have a population of over 5,000 students and you don't have a medical doctor. We have rehabilitated the hospital. We have a medical doctor, trained and qualified medical doctor that is now running the, the hospital of the college. Another significant milestone achievement made by the Dr. Philip John Cano administration was to regain back the college 223 acres of land, which for over the years have been occupied by land grabbers. The land was resurveyed by the Ministry of Lands, Housing and County Planning, which was spearheaded by the minister himself, Dr. Dennis Sandy, in an Aninova ceremony at the College Great Hall. Dr. Dennis Sandy stated that the college is the rightful owner of the land. Stone miners who have over the years caused so much destruction and damage to the land we are also be able to chase out by the college administration. The land, that is a very big achievement. It falls under objective number one. And honestly speaking, I want to thank the Minister of Lands, Dr. Dennis Sandy. For us, it's a very big achievement and a few days ago even the old students came and they've expressed their sincere appreciation to government and also to the minister, Dr. 
Dr. Denis Sandi and the, the Director of Surveys and all the Directors in the Ministry of Lands, we want to thank you. Because when I came, I inherited so many cases, but now it has been a thing of the past. I want to thank Dr. Denis Sandi and we will continue to pray for you so that in the good work that you've positioned yourself to do for this government, let the Almighty God continue to protect you. And whosoever think of any arm, that arm will never see you and your generation. It will never see your staff because it takes the kind man like you to make sure that uh, we have our land back. And I want to thank the government, I want to thank the president who also supported the process by the request that we placed to him the time we visited him that we are going through these problems. And the president said, let us go through the process by requesting the Ministry of Lands for them to do an actual survey which has been completed. Mr. President, thank you very much. We know you are a man of your words and we want to thank you and we want to pray that God will continue to direct and bless you and protect you. Whosoever think of any evil, that evil will never see you and your family and even your generation yet on board. Thank you very much. We have also develop a concept wherein we build the capacity of our lecturers. We've signed MOUs with institutions out of this country and that MOU has been yielding a lot of dividend. We have lecturers out of Sierra Leone that are being trained in the area of masters and PhDs, but uh, that training is actually focused on needy areas, that's the technical areas. As I said, we are positioning ourselves to make sure that we're able to train uh, instructors that are going to handle the technical and vocational institution. That is why we've placed in an application to the uh, Tertiary Education Commission for this college to be autonomous, for this college to be a technical university. I need to explain the kind of application that we're sending to we sent into TEC. We are requesting TEC because already we have the university status. We are producing graduates. The only thing, we are not giving them our degrees. The degrees are conferred to the students that we train at Jalai University. For all these years, from 1963, we've been under the University of Sierra Leone. In 1995, they transferred us that uh, we have to now affiliate to Jalai University. For God's sake, I think we are now mature enough to be autonomous. So that is what we are really asking. We've been training students at the degree level from 1995 to date. I think we have all what it takes to now train our students and award them their own degrees. Because People are asking, why do you want to be a university? Why do you want to be a technical university? We want to introduce courses, but these courses are not offered by Jalai University. We want to do courses that we are going to bring experts. And that expert is not the core mandate of Jalai University. Like for instance, we are training teachers to teach arts and crafts. Jalai University is not offering that course. We are training teachers in the area of technical studies. Jalai University is also not offering that course. Music, hotel and tourism. But these are the people that are really awarding us their own certificates and degrees. That's why we are asking, we want to be autonomous so that we can design our courses according to the needs of the society. We can start with diplomas. From that diploma, we can take it to HND and it will be a career path for these students. Most of the people who started with tourism, they could not continue because there was no university that will earn them a degree in tourism. Those who started with building 
in Congo Cross, they have to change because they didn't have the opportunity to continue. Carpentry. These are areas that we want to start from certificates. Even if you don't have the old levels, complete all levels, we can build you up because we've started that one with the art and crafts. We started with people who didn't even reach up to form five. Some stopped at form three. We developed their interest. And today, they are doing courses in the art and crafts, which to me, if we have the mandate to run our own institution, we'll be able to develop a lot of courses. We will not want to talk about these courses here, but we have a lot of courses that we've put in place that when we are given the authority to start our own university, to be on our own, then we will take them to TEC for the approval and accreditation, then we can now mount those courses. There are a lot of courses that this country needs, but these courses could not be able to be offered in the traditional universities unless we open up the space. And that is the thing that uh, we've applied to TEC and we await the recommendation of TEC and the concurrence from the Ministry of Education. A lot of people will say, do you have the money? Government already is giving us subvention. With that subvention, it's just to transfer the subvention from the Polytechnic to the Technical University. And by the way, all of the Polytechnics always graduate from Polytechnic to Technical University. I also want to clarify that one. In England, in Ghana, they transform, they transform a lot of Polytechnics to Technical University to address the middle bank power, to make sure that uh, people who want to be uh, fridge mechanics, they will not just stop with diplomas. They can even go up to PhD. As long as you are autonomous, you are able to mount up your own courses. And they might want to ask, do you have the, do you have the lecturers? That's why we've already signed MOUs with uh, institutions that have the capacity and I've sent some lecturers there on the training. And I'm sure by the time TEC completes our assessment, because the first set of, of people, they will graduate this year, they will return. If it's not for the Ebola, by now they should have been in the college uh, with the masters. And the ones that are coming for the PhD next year, they will return. So for me, we did not just apply, we make sure that uh, we send lecturers to go and train. And we also have the MOU for these, these, these colleges to send people to teach us, to, to send their lecturers for, for, for two, three months or even six months to teach the lecturers and also teach the students in these core areas that uh, we need to build within the, the, the country. A lot of people are saying, why are they bringing crane drivers, crane operators? We are bringing people to do a lot of technical work because these people acquire certificates from the organized institutions. Even if we introduce all of these trainings here, if we don't accredit them, if we don't give them certificates from accredited institutions, they will not be able to go out again to secure jobs. And I'm sure we are not just thinking of training people to go and look for jobs. We are training people that could also create jobs for others. So that's why we want to have our own autonomy for us to develop causes that people will start from nowhere, maybe certificates, only a certificate. And we can build those students. We develop them up to degree, masters, and even PhD as we, the need arises. Dr. Mohamed Ali Jallo, the vice principal of the college, who also doubles as the director of studies, take us through some of the changes that have taken place under the new administration of Dr. Philip John Kano and also explain their working relationship. That's one of the areas where we've had a turnaround. Like you rightly mentioned, uh, there was a lot of examination and practice Students were not uh, attending to their lectures. Uh, the lecturers themselves were not attending to lectures. So that's one of the areas he paid keen attention to. So when he came in, he reorganized the examinations office, which was under my supervision. 
And so he introduced CCTV cameras, which supervise, uh, we will see examinations right from my office here, yeah, I could see what is happening in the examination halls. And so he also introduced stiff penalties for those who engage in examination malpractice. Students who are caught spying, those ones uh, were punished severely, some of them for six months, some of them for one year, and some of them are just returned. And also a lecturer who was involved in the examination of practice uh, had his services terminated. He was investigated, found guilty, and his services were terminated. So with the robust mechanisms he put in place, uh, we've had a turnaround with the examination of practice. Students know now that there is no space for examination of practice. Lecturers know that we will run after them if they engage in examination practice, malpractice. That's why he has no, uh, he has a no, uh, uh, a, a zero tolerance to uh, examination malpractice. I think that's one of the key areas which he emphasized when he came in, the issue of quality assurance. And for the purpose of maybe this interview, we will limit quality assurance to the admission of students, the process through which we engage in the teaching and learning, and also their graduation. And also uh, the recruitment of lecturers and how they are you know, integrated into the system up to the time those who want to retire, retire. It is those areas he came in and had policies. Policies as to uh, how we make sure that there is quality in all phases of the life of the institution. We are putting in place all the, all the policies that are necessary. So that uh, when you talk about the application of students, now it's done online. And uh, this it is under his uh, administration that we have uh, made sure that, especially for degree students, based upon the guidelines we receive from our supervising ministry, no student is now admitted in this college that has not passed O-level English, uh, 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 the worst English. So English is one of the prerequisites students need to have before they come to study at this institution. The magic rests with the principal. He came in with a vision. And the first thing he tried to do was to get us to buy into that vision. And once we are bought into that vision, he ensures that we carry those uh, visions right through. Uh, he's a great leader a handsome leader. He rules through consultation. But that does not mean that he doesn't have his own ideas. Once he has his own ideas and he has taught those ideas through, he now calls his senior management team, flows those ideas to them. And then you walk through the ideas and then you arrive at something. Explaining his role and functions at the college, the Registrar of the Milton Magai College of Education and Technology, Mr. Sherifu Bangura, said the administrative wing of the college has improved immensely and he has been able to do his work with no pressure from the principal. The leadership of Dr. Philip J. we have seen a lot of changes, I mean, amazing changes, which are reflected in some of the different divisions and sectors of the college because in the registry there is timely registration of students before that was not the case in the examination office there is timely release of students results so that students will know their results we are to proceed from one level to the other. So a lot of changes have occurred and uh, we are still in the process of seeing that more changes will be implemented. You see, the type of leadership we have is one that is always looking towards ensuring that things happen. And we 
we have seen positive results since its assumption of office. Since it took over, in the area of delivery of lectures, we have seen mass massive improvement and indeed there is intensive monitoring of lectures and we have seen the students are being lectured and the lecturers are responding to whatever they are required to do. <laughs> you see, this is a dream which we could we may realize all of us are yearning for this institution to be transformed to a technical university because the present need of the country is the middle and power development. And if this institution is transformed to a technical university, I think to be able to address that need. So we are well prepared and we are ready to do whatever is required to ensure that we attain that goal. You see, Dr. Philip Khan is an amazing personality. He has that type of disposition that will always in theirs you to him. He's friendly, hmm? he's charming. You see, his relationship with staff, I would say, is really amazing. And I think short style of leadership has always produced positive results. And this is what we are now seeing in this institution. Ms. Marama Masare, as the finance officer of the college, tells us her role and how her job has been like under the new administration and her working relationship also with the principal. Okay, my job under Dr. Philip Jokano has been very supportive and improved. One area I would say is the area of salary payments, which, which is a very big achievement under this Dr. Philip Jokano as principal. Since he took over, the issue of payment of salary was a burden on the college. It will take two, three months without payment of salary, start going without salary. But since he took over as principal, he tried to work with the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Finance. And with the blessing of the President, His Excellency Dr. Jilos Madabio gave his approval for the payment of salary to be taken over by the account and general department. So now salary of staff at the tertiary institution are being paid by the account and general and this has been for over one year now and it has been successful. Payment of salary has been prompt just like the way the civil servants are receiving salary at the end of the month. Now that the same way staff at the tertiary institution as Miltimaga also is one of them is receiving salary at the end of the month on prompt basis. As the finance officer, when the principal came with this agenda and see in this short time what he has achieved. So we are providing the support for him to achieve this um his agenda that he came with. Well, the relationship between Dr. Kano and the finance staff, Dr. Kano involved all staff at the finance in his operation. It's whenever he wants to take the decision relating to finance, he will call the finance officer, which is me, so that we we'll discuss, then we will, I will take the information to the finance staff. And our relationship is very cordial and responsive that's because he's our immediate boss and we are doing our reporting to him. Elizabeth Sisse, the public relations officer of the college, tells us some of the changes the college have gone through under Dr. Philip John Cano's administration. Dr. Philip John Cano is one person that believes strongly in the media. You know, I think that's a, a very big advantage um, for him. I've been working with other principals and I know most times the response you will get from others will be like, 
I'm not answerable to the media, I'm answerable to, to ministry, I'm answerable to, to counsel, you know those sort of things. But for Dr. Kano, he, believe, he believes that your work has to be seen. And maybe because he's doing a lot, he's doing a great, great job at the college and transforming the college, he sees it fit that this thing cannot just be done quietly. At least people need to be know, know what's happening in the college. And so for everything that the college does, it's out in the opening. There is no secrets. You know, there, even if he, 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 he engaged, there are times he engaged students on sensitive issues or engaged staff on sensitive issues, he made, no, he made, it, he made sure that the media presence is felt. He's one person that believes strongly in the media and he believes in PR. And that's a very good thing, you know, because it made for me my job become kind of refreshing because there are times before his coming, we hardly have engagements with the media. We hardly let the public know what we are doing. But since the coming of um, Dr. Philip John Kanu, you know, it's kind of refreshing. People know what you're doing. People know what the college is doing. People know the transformation that is happening in the college. And we all know that information is power. You know, when you give out the right information to people, it, it helps you a lot. Then you just let it be for people to just imagine or think for themselves. And I think that uh, uh, has been one of the success of Dr. Philip John Kahn in this administration. Dr. Victor Kabia, the College Council Chairman, explained some of the changes the Council have seen since the appointment of Dr. Philip John Kahn over the years. Infrastructure, the, 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 the overall appearance and development of the institution in all the campuses, Godrich, Congo Cross, and Brookfield's campus. Now the Godrich campus, for example, is clean presently, or over a period that is clean, painted, painted and renovated a good number of the buildings. We're impressed with that he did that for both, I mean for all three campuses. God which come across and book feeds. We are pleased with him for that. Then we can also talk about improvement in terms of vehicles. Since he took over, he has succeeded in obtaining more vehicles to add to the fleet that he inherited. And so movement of staff from campus to campus is improved. Recently, we had the Ministry of Lands to resurvey our land. That had been a thorny problem over the years. The land has been resurveyed and publicly declared that the land, 233 acres, belonged to Milton Magai College at Godwich. We are also expecting the minister to add the Congo Cross and Brookfields too. This is a big achievement. Over the years, several attempts have been made, but to no avail. So he, if he succeeds in getting to that point, we congratulate him. For I can also comment on support we are having. You know it is a public institution, and we rely on the government for support. But what he is doing, or what he has succeeded in doing, is getting additional support from external donors. For example, the lab at Godrich, all the labs, physics, chemistry, biology, they have all been improved. There is development in the arts and craft development in the department. There are improvements at Kumo Cross as well, in terms of materials and facilities and in Brookfield's campus as well. Presently, or most recently, has a partner that will come and do repairs for Brookfield's campus. They move towards a polytechnic university. And I believe we have almost got there. We are just awaiting final settlement from the Parliamentary Subcommittee of Education. We 
succeeded in satisfying all the conditions set by the TEC. And the TEC, they too have concluded their work and submitted a positive report to the Parliamentary Subcommittee. And I believe it will be a fruition. Thank you. Other administrative staffs, students, have also given their checks on the administration under Dr. Philip John Kanu. I've enjoyed every bit of it working here as acting dean of campus, especially working with Dr. Philip John Kanu under his direction. I've enjoyed working with him. I've enjoyed every bit of it I've seen because he has been factor for me. When I took over as active in of campus, this campus was almost at a zero stage. They used to call here the Cinderella of Nitsinagai. And we all know what Cinderella means. The entire campus was almost not fit for purpose as somebody put it some time ago. This was not fit for purpose at all. Campus was a right off like. But when I took over with support of Dr. Kanu, we have been able to transform. Because you know that he's a very transformative leader. Just like he's working there at Godrich Campus, he spins over to us here. He's supporting me to also transform the Bookfist Campus, as you can see around. If you have been here about one and a half year ago, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you can compare that time to now, you will see that you will see the transformation I'm talking about. Um, I think we have a, a very good working relationship with the principal because his vision is what I do admire. It's not the principle, but I do admire his vision. This is the man, he came to this institution. He has transformed this institution from where the institution was to today. At least he has done his own part, which is very good, and which I do admire him for that. In terms of the infrastructure, he has really done well. I believed you have gone round the campus, you've seen it. Even like the Congo Cross campus, where you interview me, he had all the plans. Maybe very soon we will start to renovate the, the, the hall and we start to renovate the the business management building. Yes, one um, laudable initiative of the administration is the fact that we are working in collaboration with the heads of departments and deans of faculties with regards to ensuring prompt submission of question of items, that is questions for exams and also prompt submission of grades, scores as a result of uh, assessments of students. And then thereafter the grades are submitted and then we ensure that we work to ensure that the results are published on time. That has always been the um, secret behind the success of the prompt submission and publication of results the new administration. Um, to start with, um, the, this role as a human resource was never existed in Multimagai. It was created by the new principal, that is Dr. Philip John Kanu. And it was created to ensure that staff are comfortable in their working environment. It was created to give advice to management in decision making. 
and to also recruit the best staff for any position. Before, it was not like that. When I took up this office, the personnel files, that is a, their staff files, we are not in good order. Sometimes we go into files and you will not even see appointment letter, nor um, application. But with the help of the principal, all of these things, have, we've put them in place to ensure they are there. So for me, the principal has done a very good job. He's been very, very instrumental in making a change. The estate, I should say, the whole compound, the estate as a whole, is very clean now. Workers are doing their job, lecturers are going to classes, students are going to classes, taking their classes, because the most is a very disciplined principal. So we have knowledge being passed on properly. So he's been doing a lot. You can see how beautiful the campus is now. This is what we used to know 20, 30 years ago. So he's been doing a great job. Muti Makai is going back to its past glory. Well, we share his dream, and it is also the alumni's duty to support him, and we are doing all we can to support him, push him. Because this college was established, say, 1959, 60s, up till now, even colleges that have come just five, ten years are now university. We are happy for them. But we also, you, um, Milton Magai, we also want it to be a university. If I can say, um, it's a blessing and honor for us to have um, Dr. Philip Kano, who is our current principal. And we believe that over the years, he has tremendously done great work in our institution, especially for the three campuses. In the area of learning, learning has been very effective, where students have been attending their classes, taking their work seriously, and also our lecturers as well have been lecturing students. And we believe that that path has liberated students to achieve to a greater height in the learning field. Um, first and foremost, I believe certainly that what makes Metsumagai College of Education and Technology a special or unique institution is not itself, but it is the character and personality of the people. Now, um, in terms of the administration, they tried as best as possible to ensure that they engage all the aspirants by then in order for us to realize that we are one and we should work in the interest of the institution and we, sh we should set ourselves as role models. And from that path, as aspirants, we all work concertedly and also we decided to engage some of our supporters not to engage in any, in any violence activities. Um, the relationship between the students and that of the principal has been like um, a parent body to us because we have always been there for the administration seeking their interest and also the administration has always been there for us. This principal is so passionate about how um, students have quality education. Um, I, not, I can't talk about infrastructural development. He's trying to reach every angle that he could just to make things happen. There are a lot of changes. There are a lot of drastic changes. You know, we, we are lucky, really, we are lucky to have a, a principal like Dr. Khan, President. As we are the custodians of this land and we donate this land to the Metsumagai College, we express our concern that we want our own uh, children also to be benefit in this institution and we welcome us. We want to say thank you to you. Dr. Philip John Kanu is one many have described as a developmental individual. Workers, students, and government officials have praised him for the good job he has done in the college. Milton Magai College of Education and Technology 
is one of the big learning institutions in the country, which have helped to improve the middleman level power in order to make sure that the country move forward in terms of development and they are still committed to see that the country improves and the government of President Julius Marabionu's direction agenda, which is the free and quality education, actualized.